نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فكنا في الدين اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سورة يوسف This surah was revealed in Mecca it has 12 stanzas and 111 verses 12th by the order of arrangement and 53rd by the order of revolution Regarding the time period, it was revealed in the second period of the stay in Mecca. And this was the time when the opposition and the hostility and the enmity by the people of Mecca was continuously increasing. The background of the revelation of the surah is that when the messages of Prophet ﷺ, they started to spread, then the people of Quraysh, they in the enmity they started adopting certain methods to defame the teachings of islam and the messages of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and one of their trick was that since they themselves they were illiterate and they had no divine scriptures for themselves so what they used to do is that they used to go to the people of the book that is the jews and the christians and they used to request them to give them questions from their own historical events mentioned in their books so that they when they will ask prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these questions because they knew that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was also not literate he will not be able to answer these questions hence the falsehood of the prophethood Uh, will come out also so with this intention they had asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam three questions even before the revelation of surah uh, surah kahf and now they asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the question that hazrat ibrahim alaihi salam and his descendants they had settled in palestine but how did hazrat musa alaihi salam and bani israel how did they happen to reach egypt prophet sallallahu alaihi salam obviously did not know so he did not answer and he just kept quiet till the verses of surah yusuf were revealed in which answer to all their questions was given and it was narrated that how Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam's brother brothers they had planned and thrown him in the well to be taken out by the caravan to Egypt and they was he was sold as a slave and finally he managed to get to the position of a ruler of Egypt and then he called his parents and families from the famine stricken areas of Palestine to reside with him in Egypt and this is how bani israel migrated from palestine to egypt and finally uh, here musa alayhi salam was later chosen on so in the verses of surah yusuf the answer to their question was given but not only were the quraish provided with the answer to the question but at the same time a very effective and a very powerful message was also conveyed to them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained how the events in life of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam and uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam they resembled and how the evil behavior of the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam it resembled the behavior of Quraysh of Makkah who were basically the tribal brothers of Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam So this was done to warn them of the results of their evil doings with Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Allah clearly told them that how Allah helped Hazrat Yusuf alaihi salam and how the brothers were punished so they were warned that similar will be the end Allah will help and Allah will protect uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and will punish the Meccans if they do not refrain from opposing uh prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and making wicked plans against him now if we relate the events in the lives of 
both the profits are very, very similar. Highlighting the few similarities, we can see that Hazrat Yusuf Salam's brothers, they turned against Hazrat Yusuf and similarly the Quraysh of Mecca also became hostile to Prophet Both of them, they planned to kill and to get rid of the prophets. Third point, which is similar, is that both the prophets were finally forced out of their hometown, away from their family and from their friends. Both finally got blessed by respect and regard, love, position, power, authority, rule in the city they had immigrated to. Hazrat Yusuf also became the ruler of Egypt, and Prophet also became the head of state of uh, Medina. Similarly, both after getting the power and the authority and the rule, both of them, they implemented the religion, the orders of Allah on the land of Allah. Then similarly, both after victory, they both stayed humble, kind, merciful, and forgiving. For example, at the conquest of Mecca, Prophet ﷺ was repeated. He was repeating the words which, was, which were spoken to um, the brothers by Hazrat Yusuf ﷺ. He was saying, La and he was forgiving. He was announcing forgiveness for all. Similarly, exactly similar to how Hazrat Yusuf ﷺ forgave all his brothers. The uh, brothers were also ashamed and they asked for forgiveness. And so did a majority of the non-believers of Mecca. They also seek forgiveness and they, most of them also embrace Islam. So there are many points which are very similar in the life history of both Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Hazrat Yusuf Salaam. Now, before um, I would start the uh, going through the verses, I would want to narrate the main life history in a chronological order. By traditions of Bible, Hazrat Yusuf was born in 1906 BC. He was the son of Hazrat Yaqub who was again the son of Hazrat Ishaq and was the grandson of Hazrat Ibrahim And um, his birth was in Hebron, Hebron, which is, was a city of Palestine. And the whole incidence of being thrown in the well took place in 1890 BC. And Hazrat Yusuf age at that time was almost like uh, about 17, 18 years old when he was thrown in the well. And the well in which he was thrown was in the northern area of uh, Sikkim, which was a place in Palestine close to Hebron. And the caravan which took him out was traveling from the city of Jilad, which was the city of France, Jordan, and it was traveling towards Egypt. And in Egypt, in those days, Egypt was ruled by the fifth, 15th family of the Hyksos kings, and they were disbelievers, and they were idol worshippers. Now, 17, 18 years of age, he was thrown in the well, taken out, and was sold as a slave. Then he was taken to the house of Aziz of Egypt. He stayed here for about two to three years. And then he was imprisoned for about eight to nine years. His rule lasted for about 30 years and he passed away at the age of 80 years. Now, before going through the message of Surah Yusuf, I will also want to sum up the basic lesson which we are going to learn from the events. And uh, I would request, I, I might not be able to repeat the messages every time on all the verses, but summarizing this in the start would basically mean that whenever you are going through the verses, you will have, uh, you will have these, uh, the basic message and the basic lessons learned from the surah as a summary. And you will keep on repeating these messages in your mind when we are going through the verses. The basic things we learn from the surah is that firstly, what happens is, is always what? Allah, Allah wishes. The plannings of the most 
powerful of rulers, the most bitter of the enemies, it generally it always fails and the plan of Allah is always completed. Allah is Al-Alim and Allah is Al-Hakim. He is all knowing and he is all wisdom. So whatever, wherever happens is with his will, his knowledge and his wisdom. Then we learn that most, most of the different trials, the critical, the critical hardships have some wisdom and they have some goodness in them. We might not understand or comprehend with our limited knowledge and comprehension, but there is always some hair in even the worst of trials. The goodness of the result may sometimes show up early and sometimes it may show up late, but there is always a wisdom and a blessing even in the worst and the most difficult of trials and hardships sent by the orders of Allah. So with the will of Allah, when, when his bondsmen are put into trial, they have to stay in a state of what? They have to stay in a state of gratitude, remembrance, patience, and obedience. Whenever tried with the will of Allah, all wise, all knowing, the bondsmen have to stay content, pleased, and peaceful in the decisions of the Lord, and very patiently wait for the blessings followed by the trial, which is encompassing their life. The events of Surah Yusuf clearly show us the manners and the sunnah of the prophets also, showing how polite and good their manners were, how soft-natured and humble they were, how merciful, kind they were, and highlights the sincerity of their goodness and their piety also. So these are the basic messages. We are keep on, we will be keep on uh, getting all these messages from all the verses and all the manners of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam and Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif Lam Ra. Tilka ayatul kitab al mubin. Inna anzalahu. قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن قمت من قبله لمن الغافلين الله سبحانه وتعالى says ألف لام را these are the verses of the clear book. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran that you might understand. We relate to you the best of stories in what we have revealed to you of this Quran, although you were before it among the unaware. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling the story of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam narrated in Surah Yusuf as Ahsan al-Qasas, the best story of the Quran. Subhanallah. So today we shall be going through the best story of the best book of the world by the best author, the Lord of the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand, comprehend, and remember the message and the teachings of Surah Yusuf and help us improve ourselves to be better human beings. One of these stories mentioned when Yusuf salam said to his father, Oh, my father, indeed, I have seen in a dream 11 stars and the sun and the moon, and I saw them prostrating to me. 
So here in this verse, Yusuf salam narrated his dream to his father, Yaqub alayhi salam. And in return, he advised the son. He told the interpretation of the dream and also gave him, gave him an advice. He said, oh, my son, do not relate your vision to your brothers or they will contrive against you a plan. Indeed, shaitan to man is a manifest enemy. So the father, Hazrat Yaqub, he advised Hazrat Yusuf not to relate the dream to his brothers. What we learn from here are quite a few things regarding the dreams. Dreams are a reality and they can be of three types. A dream can be a thought coming in the mind whatever we are thinking before sleeping or whatever is on the top of our minds before we sleep, it comes as it is in our dreams. The second type of dream may be a whisper of shaitan. And the third is, it may be a message or inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dreams of prophets were considered as revelations or inspirations of Allah. For example, we know that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dreamt that he was performing Umrah. So this was what? This was an order of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salam saw that he had slain his son. So what was this? This was an order of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And uh, we learn that dreams may be true or they may be false. For example, before prophethood, <coughs> Before prophethood, Prophet Sallallahu had started having true dreams. That is, whatever he experienced in the dream actually happened in real life as well. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu has been reported in a tradition that if a person has true dreams, then this is a sufficient proof of his being truthful and honest. But by the way, we need to remember that if a person has false dream, this doesn't imply by any means that he is a liar or he is dishonest. Now, we also learn from the words of Hadith that a true dream is the 46th fraction of prophethood. And we learn from the words of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, similar to what Hazrat Yaqub had advised Hazrat Yusuf La taqsus, that do not relate or narrate your dream in which you have been, you have, you've seen yourself receiving the respect and honor. Do not relate it or narrate it to your brothers. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that if someone has a pleasant or a dream in which he has been blessed, then he should not narrate it to anyone other than who is reliable and is not envious also. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu has clearly instructed us also regarding bad dreams, that if any person has a bad dream or a bad vision, like in a, in a dream, there is a mishap, there is a crisis. So if you have a bad vision, then do not narrate it to anyone, because if it is narrated, it exactly happens the same. So these are a few instructions of uh, Prophet Sallallahu regarding dreams. Verse number six, and thus will your Lord. So this was what Hazrat Yaqub how he interpreted the dream. And thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of narratives and complete his favor upon you and upon the family of Hazrat Yaqub And he and he completed it upon your fathers before Ibrahim and Ishaq. Indeed, your Lord is knowing and wise. So Hazrat Yaqub told him the interpretation of the dream. This itself is a knowledge. Knowing and talking about the interpretation of dreams itself is a knowledge. Allah had blessed this knowledge to Hazrat Yaqub Hazrat Yusuf and even Prophet And with the knowledge of interpretation of dreams, no one should go about interpreting dreams until and unless the person has true knowledge about it. 
just by making assumptions or guessworks or hints or relating things to certain signs. No, we should not go about interpreting dreams until and unless we have the proper knowledge of interpreting dreams. And the message we learn from this verse are that the dialogue which took place between the father and the son. We learn quite a few successful parenting tricks of Hazrat Yaqub from this dialogue which took place between the son and the father. We learn that Hazrat Yaqub was close and well bonded to the son. The son has a dream and comes up to the father, walks up to the father, explains his dream. So shows what? That he was close and he was well bonded to the son. He was patiently listening to his queries and issues. Hazrat Yaqub had the time and used to take out the time, was giving his son his time and importance both. Then we can also see that it seems that there was a friendly bond between the both, the father and the son. We can see that the father knows what is going on in the mind and in the life of the son. Then the father is very frank and friendly and informal. And this form of a relationship and bond is existing between the two. And then the father tries to answer the questions and solve the issues of the son, guides him for what the best is. So this is a successful parenting tip by Hazrat Yaqub to all of us who are reading Surah Yusuf, that this is the type of a bond the parents need to develop between themselves and their children. And last but not the least, the father, when in, while his normal day-to-day -day conversation and interaction gives an introduction to the attributes of Allah. I repeat again, Hazrat Yaqub while his normal day-to-day -day conversations and while his normal interactions, daily interactions with the son, he is giving an introduction to the attributes of Allah. Like he's saying, your Lord is like what? Al-Aleem and Al-Hakim. He is all-knowing and he is all-wise. Remember, this introduction to the attributes of Allah by Hazrat Yaqub salam, that he is Al-Aleem and he is Al-Hakim. This came out as the main asset of Hazrat Yusuf salam's life. It became the main power behind him all the turning life, all the turning parts of his life. When he was in the well, when he was in the slave market, when he was imprisoned, throughout the different turnings of his life, he knew a voice deep down in his heart would tell him, don't get upset. Allah is Al-Aleem and Allah who is with you is Al-Hakim. So this is, this is an important sunnah of Hazrat Yaqub and a very, very successful tip for all the Muslim parents to introduce the children to the attributes of Allah. And moreover, the method of talking about Allah is also very effective. There is no formal sitting for teaching of religion. There is no formal sitting for teaching of attributes of Allah to the children, but indirectly, indirectly in an unfelt way during the routine, con routine conversation is an introduction to Allah made. This is very important style of talking and teaching about Allah and about the commandments of Allah. Because you know, when we as parents, we sit formally and we, we call our children, come let's talk about some, some attributes of Allah or some commandments of Allah, or let, let me tell you something about the Quran or about the Hadith. Come all of you, we, will, we are going to have a session of the teachings of Allah. So this generally, generally doesn't somehow work out, especially with the youth of today. Usually we get a response like the children coming up and say, oh, mommy, you start all over again. Oh, mommy, you just don't have anything else to talk. You just have one thing to talk about. So this 
passive, unfelt, indirect introduction during the normal daily conversations, just dropping a message passively is a very effective manner of introducing the attributes of Allah to the children. And once they will start recognizing their Lord, then it will obviously become very easy for them to love their Lord, to obey their Lord, and to submit to their Lord. Verse number seven, certainly were there in Yusuf salam and his brothers signs for those he asked. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates here that the behavior of the brothers of Yusuf salam and their punishment is what? It is a message for all those who had asked who the people of Quraysh. Verse number eight, when they said, Yusuf salam and his brother are more beloved to our father than we. What is this? This is a comparison ending up in feeling of envy. They are more beloved to our father than we, while we are a clan. Indeed, our father is in a clear error. So from here onwards, I will be pointing out to the traits of the brothers of Hazrat Yusuf salam, and see slowly the change which will come out with the successful parenting of Hazrat Yaqub salam. So now from here, we will relate as to what were their manners and their behavior and their conduct to start with. The brothers of Yusuf salam, they had, they had become envious of Yusuf salam, because they thought that Hazrat Yaqub salam, he loved and he gave more attention to Hazrat Yusuf salam and his younger brother. They had turned envious. The second thing is they're saying Nahnu Usba, that we are a clan. So shows what? That they were arrogant and they were proud. And then their sentence and their words like Inna Abana Lafi Dalal, that our father is in a clear error or he is misguided. This, this labeling of their father as being misguided or being in an error and calling out names to, his, to their father is what? Showing that they were disobedient. They were disrespectful. They were disrespectful sons and they were, they were ill-mannered and they, were, they had a bad conduct and mannerism with their father. Verse 9, they said, kill Yusuf salam, or cast him out to another land. The countenance of your father will then be only for you, and you will be after that a righteous people. So they said, kill Yusuf salam. Remember, this is what envy leads to. This is the result of being envious. Envious mind is so, so very negative. It opens the gates to such major sins. And for whom? For whom? They are the sons. They are the grandsons. They are the great grandsons of prophets. Planning to murder their younger brother? This was made possible, this major sin by such a pious family? Such a major sin was such, such a pious family. This was made possible by envious, envious state of mind. Remember, in this material world of today, we frequently need to analyze ourselves regarding any form of envy in our hearts. And why did they plan to murder Hazrat Yusuf salam? So that when he is no longer around, then they will, be, they will be the center of attention of the father. How negative, how grossly negative. Rather than improving their own manners as sons and to gain attention, they thought of a negative tactics. This is envious state of mind. And another thing they said, that after 
murdering Hazrat Yusuf al Islam and after killing Hazrat Yusuf al Islam or casting him out to another land, then after that, you can turn and you can, you can repent and then you can become righteous people. This is generally, and this is in fact always a suggestion by Shaitan for encouraging people to commit sins. Because Shaitan encourages people to commit sins and uh, promising them that later on you can become righteous. For, for any, any person to commit sin and then afterwards seeking forgiveness to get exemption from the sins is to encourage them to commit major sins. And this is a, a very nasty trick of Shaitan, which it usually works on people. Verse number 10, said a speaker among them, like one of the brothers came up with a suggestion when they were planning to kill Yusuf, do not kill Yusuf, but throw him into the bottom of a well. Some travelers will pick him up if you would do something. This suggestion came up from one of the brothers while they were planning what to do with Hazrat Yusuf Now this suggestion was what? Remember, this is Allah. The brothers wanted to kill him and to get rid of him, but Allah just planned to get Hazrat Yusuf out of Palestine and out of his family. Now, what happened? What happened? Not what the envious and the clever and the wicked brothers they had planned or they had wanted. What happened was what Allah had wanted. So never, never do we need to be scared from the worst of the enemies. No person on Allah's earth can harm us until and unless Allah wants this. And this is Allah. And this is his planning. When he is sending a trial, he was also sending a means of cutting it down also. He never leaves his bondsmen. He never leaves his bondsmen unattended and unsupported and unprotected. Verse number 11, they said, O oh, our father, why do you not entrust us with Yusuf salam, while indeed we are to him sincere counselors? So after making a plan of uh, killing Hazrat Yusuf salam, they now came over to Hazrat Yaqub salam, their father, and just, just notice the style of speech. It is so aggressive and they are trying to stay one up. They are trying to have an upper hand as compared to their father, trying to blame their father that he is not entrusting him and he doesn't believe in him and he doesn't have trust in or faith in him. Verse number 12, send him with us tomorrow that he might eat well and play and indeed we will be his guardians. This is all a lie, a cooked up story, saying that, uh, telling their father that they will be guarding him, whereas the intentions were of killing him or throwing him in a well. This behavior of lying and a difference in speech and intention was what? They were hypocrites. So you can see, I'm continuously highlighting the behavior and the mannerism and the traits of the sons of Hazrat Yaqub salam, which we will see slowly were transformed and changed and how they improved with the successful parenting of Hazrat Yaqub salam. So they were what? They were clear cut hypocrites and they were liars. Verse number 13, Yaqub salam said, indeed, it saddens me that you should take him, and I fear that the wolf would eat him while you are of him unaware. Now, how did Hazrat Yaqub salam know that, uh, that the sons will come up with the story that a wolf will eat him? Did he have a knowledge of the future? No, nothing of the sort. It was just his wisdom, his experience of life, and his insight to the, to the traits of his son that he knew how they might plan or how wicked they might turn out to be. It was just his wisdom and experiences of life.
no knowledge of the future whatsoever. Verse number 14, they said, if a wolf should eat him while we are, we are a strong clan, indeed, we would then be losers, repeatedly being proud and arrogant of them, of them being a strong clan. Verse number 15, so when they took him out and agreed to put him into the bottom of the well, but we inspired to him, to whom, to Hazrat Yusuf salam, you will surely inform them someday about this affair of theirs, why they do not perceive your identity. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inspiring Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam in the well and consoling him. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not leave his patient bondsman in the worst of all the trials and hardships. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just narrating the important parts of the story and when we connect them all these different parts of the story then we can uh, relate a continuous events only the important parts of the story are being related what happened when Hazrat Yusuf salam, was thrown in the well how did he believe how did he behave and how did he what was his manner and what was his behavior had there been any person other than Hazrat Yaqu Yusuf salam, being actually thrown by his elder brothers to the bottom of the well, there in the darkness of the well, all by himself, with nothing to eat, with nothing and no, no one to help, no one to listen to his cry. And then with obviously very eminent that he is going to, he is going to die hungry and thirsty all by himself, anyone in his situation would have cried, would have howled, raising hue and cry, calling them bad names, cursing the brothers and complaining to Allah. But here, there is nothing of the sort. He seems calm, he is quiet, he is content, he is patient. How could he get all this? How was he in state of patience and how did he deep down in the well, how was he calm? Because there deep down in the well, there was, there was the voice of the father echoing in his memory. Yusuf, remember Allah is Al-Alim and he is Al-Hakim. Deep down in the well, he knew he knew, he realized that my parents, my family, my friends, no one knows where I am, which state I am in. But the Lord, but the Lord with whose will I can be taken out, who can save me, knows he is all knowing. He is all seeing. He saw what my brothers did to me. He is seeing the state I am in. He is hearing what I am saying. He heard what they say, he heard what they said and what they planned, and he is hearing what I am saying. He is Al-Hakim. In his orders, there will always be a wisdom and there will be always some blessing or the other. So knowing all these attributes of Allah and recognizing his Rabb, it was easy for him to stay content with the will of Allah, with the decisions of Allah, with the trial from Allah. Just imagine, just imagine that if a person was thrown in a well and then he was told that maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Will he possibly, possibly understand or believe that this being thrown in the well will be a blessing in disguise. But it is we, we who know that in Yusuf salam's case, this was actually a blessing in disguise. Being thrown in the, in the well was a blessing. For it, it was going to do what? It was paving a way for him to be the king of Egypt. So remember, Remember that all forms of trials or hardships come by the order of Allah. 
by the order of Allah who is Al-Aleem and who is Al-Hakim. And they will always be a source of blessing later on, sometimes early, sometimes late. But they are full of wisdom and they are full of blessings. And these blessings will encompass our lives early or late, whenever he wills and whenever he decides. And they came to their father at night, weeping. They said, oh, our father, indeed, we went racing each other and left Yusuf salam, with our possessions and a wolf ate him up. But you would not believe us even if we were truthful. So now in this verse from 16 to 18, there is a conversation between Hazrat Yaqub salam, and the disobedient sons. And they brought upon his shirt false blood. Yaqub salam said, rather, your souls have enticed you to something. So patience is most fitting and Allah is the one sought for help against that which you described. So they returned to their father after throwing him in the well and they had cooked up and they had fabricated a false story and not only fabricated a false story, they had for a proof, they had brought a blood stained shirt of Hazrat Yusuf salam for the proof of the fabricated story they had created that, uh, that a wolf had eaten up Hazrat, Yaqub, Hazrat Yusuf salam. Now, listening to the whole of the story and realizing the events of the happening, how did Hazrat, Yusuf, Hazrat Yaqub salam, respond? What did he say? Swabrun Jamilun. This is the trait of the patient, God fearing believers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Baqarah. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَثَابَتُمْ مُصِيبَتٌ قَالُوا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ He stayed patient. He was patient, he was cool, he was composed. At such, at such a calamity, imagine what the calamity was. A father of ten sons, the ten sons who had murdered a father of 10 murderer sons, murdering his beloved sons. He is staying patient. Only, only the one who is aware of the attributes of Allah can do so. How did he behave with his sons? How was his, what was his response with his sons? Did he shout, scold, beat, beat them, curse them? No, nothing of the sort. He had very much, he did very much understand that they were telling lies. They had, they had fabricated a false, a false story. And moreover, he knew that they had done such an evil deed, but still handling with his, handling his disobedient, disrespectful, evil, wicked son was with total tolerance and patience, overlooking, ignoring their follies, forgiving them. So the, math, the main method of handling their sons was to do what? Just ignore, just stay cool, just stay composed and patience. You know, this is much against what we normally say as the famous proverb, it goes, spare the rod and spoil the child. Remember, action and reaction are equal but opposite. This is the third law of Newton, but it is a reality also that action and reaction are equal but opposite. Whatever goes in, is going to come out sooner or later. So whatever form of shouting, yelling, cursing, calling bad names, hitting, goes in the children by the parents is surely bound to come out sooner or later. 
So this is what we learn from the successful parenting tips of Hazrat Yaqub regarding his disrespectful and evil and wicked children. Verse number 19. And there came a company of travelers. Then they sent their water drawer and he let down his bucket. And he said, good news, here is a boy. And they concealed him, taking him as a merchant dies. And Allah was knowing of what they did. Now, what happened? From where did the company of travelers come? And why did they draw their waters? What is this all? This is Allah. This is Allah and his plans. The wicked, envious brothers had planned to kill as Allah says, makaru wa makar Allah. They had planned, but Allah had planned also. Allah had planned to save. So what happened is what Allah had planned. Moreover, it is clear that Allah never leaves his bondsmen. Allah never leaves his bondsmen alone and unsupported. When Allah puts a person in trial, he creates situation, he creates conditions to take him out of it simultaneously also. Remember, trials are like thunderstorms. They're, they're not going to be permanent. Trials from Allah by the order of Allah are like thunderstorms by the order of Allah. They are temporary. They will pass off after some time. There were trials of being thrown by his brothers, by his own brothers. But at the same time, Allah had play, planned, <coughs> Allah had planned a manner of his being taken out of the well also. Allah had put, Allah had put an idea in the mind of the leader of the caravan to change his route. And then to send a person to draw a pail of water. This was the plan of Allah. And this is the reality of his trials and, and, his, and his mercy to help his bondsmen. And Allah in trial is all seeing and hearing and knowing when Allah sees that the person he pulled in trial, when Allah sees that the person he put in trial by his order and his planning, the person is patient then the rule of Allah, inna Allah ma'aswabirin, it operates. If only we would learn and remember all these lessons of the story, our lives would become very, very comfortable and peaceful in all the trials, in all the crises, in all the hardships we are going to face. Let us all revise. Allah is whom? Allah is Al-Alim and Al-Hakim. And why did the person say good news? Because there was a time in those days, uh, men and women and children, they were caught and they were sold as slaves. So this was what? This was like a merchandise for them. And that is why he said it's good news. <coughs> and then Allah says in this verse that the people who found, who took out Hazrat uh, Yusuf from the well, they concealed him. Why did they conceal him? Because they wanted to sell him as a slave. And they feared that some of his relatives might come and might spot him and they might take him away. So they concealed him so they could sell and get some money. Verse number 20. And they sold him. And they sold him for a reduced price, a few dirhams. And they were concerning him of those content with little. So the people who of the caravan who had taken out as a Yusuf from the well, they sold him in a slave market and they reduced the price to few dirhams just for 20 dirhams. Imagine just for 20 dirhams was Hazrat Yusuf sold. How worthless was he considered? being sold in a slave market, like animals were traded, a beloved son, the apple of the eye being sold for 20 dirhams. 
how how very worthless he must have felt how upset and how hurt he must have been but still he keeps quiet he stays patient this was another trial from allah remember life is a trial one trial ends and the other trial starts rabbana wala tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bi allah subhanahu wa taala don't try us with trials with which we cannot endure for which we cannot have patience so slavery was the next trial but remember even here allah did not leave his patient his patient yusuf alay salam all by himself what happened next verse number 21 and the one from egypt who brought him who bought him for 20 dirhams and the one from egypt who brought him said to his wife make his residence comfortable perhaps he will benefit us or we will adopt him as a son and thus we established yusuf alay salam in the land that we might teach him the interpretation of events and allah is predominant over his affairs but most of the people do not know now who brought who bought him it was the aziz of egypt aziz was in the name of the person but was the was opposed or was the title of the designation he was a senior official in the court of the king of egypt and what sort of a person was he he was kind and a caring person and above all he was childless allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created situation for hazrat yusuf alay salam to get to his house he could have been bought he could have been it was very very possible that he could have been bought by a harsh hard hearted a cruel master but instead allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranged for the best of masters and the most suitable environment and the environment of a senior official of the king of egypt the best of environment where hazrat yusuf al islam could could also learn the worldly knowledge and the skills of leadership and the skills of administration he was exposed to this environment this is allah this is allah and his plannings and his love and his mercy and his wisdom and his help and support for all those patient bondsmen who are being tried he wanted to get yusuf alay salam to the kingship of egypt so smoothly smoothly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him out and kept on changing and kept on shifting and drifting him from one situation to the other to start with allah made him stay with his father and with his family there he could he could and in fact he got the best of spiritual and religious training there he was loved and he was cared and for him to learn how to love and care but this wasn't enough he needed to be exposed to the worldly knowledge and skills also so allah subhanahu wa taala very smoothly with his own plan chose him he wanted to choose him for his prophethood and he wanted him to be appointed as the king of egypt so he very swiftly and very smoothly moved him from out of his family from out of palestine he moved him out of one environment to the other environment from one hardship to the other hardship and the purpose of all was to brush him up to polish him up to refine him up and the one who was rightly chosen so he was exposed to different conditions different environments and different hardships and trials remember whom allah chooses for his task he puts him to trial to make him fit for his trial allahumma ja'alna minhum rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim 
verse number 22. And when Yusuf salam, reached maturity, we gave him judgment and knowledge, and thus we reward the doers of good. Verse 23, and she in whose house he was sought to seduce him. She closed the doors and said, come you. He said, I seek the refuge of Allah. Indeed, he is my master who has made good my residence. Indeed, wrongdoers will not succeed. So now there is a happening in the house of his master, in the absence of his master. The mistress, the wife of Aziz, sought to seduce Hazrat Yusuf salam. What was his answer? Ma'az Allah, I seek the refuge of Allah. This is and this should be the response of all the righteous, pious, and the God-fearing believers. As Prophet Sallallahu has been reported, it has been reported in a tradition in Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu has said that on the day of judgment, there will be no shade except the shade of the throne of Allah. And the sun will be as close as close as a mile and the people will be submerged in their perspiration according to their deeds, some up to their ankles, some up to their knees, some up to their waist, and some would have a brittle of perspiration and they will be, they will be diving in it. So there will be no shade except the shade of throne of Allah. And then Prophet Sallallahu announced and promised that there will be seven whom will be in the shade of Allah on the day of resurrection. The first will be a just ruler. The second, a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah. And the third, Third, a person whose heart is attached to the mosque. And next, two men who love each other for the sake of Allah and they part for the sake of love of Allah. And the next is a person who, who is called by a woman of beauty and position for an illegal relationship. But he says, I fear Allah. This was the response of Hazrat Yusuf And the next is a man who gives charity in the path of Allah and hides it in such a way that his left hand does not know what his right hand gave in charity. And the seventh and the last is a man who remembered Allah in private and his, and his eyes shed tears out of fear of Allah. So this was Hazrat Yusuf salam's response. He resisted the seductive, the seductive invitation of the mistress. But resisting this seductive invitation of the mistress, was it easy? Imagine a slave, young, youthful, having all desires, and in this position, pleasing and getting on the right side of the mistress would seem a world to him. All forms of social, physical, psychological, emotional, economic advantages he would be able to drive out of it. Was it easy? It wasn't easy saying no, but for the God fearing believers of Allah, it was, it was trivial and easy, obviously. And then Hazrat Yusuf also explained the reason for his behavior. He added, Innahu Rabbi Maswaya, that I'm behaving in this manner. Why? Because my master, my Lord, my Allah has given me a good residence. Hazrat Yusuf salam saying and announcing that Allah had given him a good residence. This is gratitude. What sort of a good residence was this? Yusuf salam away from his house, separated from his family, deprived from the care, the love, support of his companions, of his near and dear ones, all by himself, a stranger in a foreign country, and above all, being, being a slave. What sort of a good residence is this? 
but remember gratitude gratitude is not related to the blessings it is simply an outlook an outlook it is a frame of mind in the same situation two people in the same situation one may be thankless unhappy upset cribbing and grumbling but the other in the same situation and the same scenario may be grateful and will be content will be peaceful and happy because he has a positive frame of mind and he has a positive outlook to life i repeat again as they say two men behind the prison bars one looked at the darkness and other saw the stars so if we start thinking and looking positive the one if the person starts thinking looking and positive then one can always find plenty of blessings to be grateful for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in quran wa in tu'uddu ni'matullahi la tuhsuha that if you start counting the blessings of allah you will not be able to count them they are so they are so numerous and they are so innumerable and they are so countless so hazrat yusuf alayhi salam was grateful there were still so many things so many blessings even in this deprived situation if he was thrown in the well he was also taken out thanks to allah if was if he was sold as a slave he was bought and kept by a kind caring master thanks to allah allahumma ja'alni sabooran wa ja'alni shukura rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik and she certainly determined to seduce him and he would have inclined to her had he not seen the proof of his lord and thus it was that we should avert him from evil and immorality indeed he was of our chosen servants so the chosen servants of allah need to do what say say no to all forms of immorality and the chosen people of allah need to do what need to stay modest and commit and adopt the moral standards of ethics allahumma ja'alna minhum verse number 25 and they both raised to the door and she tore his shirt from the back and they found her husband at the door she said what is the recompense of who intended evil for your wife but that he be imprisoned or a painful punishment now what is this all about allah's help and protection against the seduction offered by the mistress was again a trial this was a trial but did in this trial did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the merciful lord leave yusuf alayhi salam all by himself no when he was put to trial even before it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to evolve a source of protection and help now the mistress had very carefully and cunningly and tactfully planned the whole event she had planned that while her husband had left and was not supposed to return for a safe period but by the will of allah the situation was created and the husband unexpectedly returned early and arrived at the site spot on and caught the things red handed this is allah he does not he he does not leave his bondsmen and he does what he wants only his will and planning works and the planning of all wicked and evil fail he doesn't leave his bondsmen suffering in trial sometimes early sometimes late but he does help his people so his help comes from whom who are patient who are obedient who rely on al alim and al hakim and stay content with his decisions moreover we also see that the that the woman she very craftily she the seducive mistress she quickly changed her stance few minutes back she was forcing him to accept her invitation and she was running after him but to see her husband she turned back and she she started blaming him of the bad intention 
telling lies. Remember, telling lies is what? Ummul Khabaris. A, pay, a person who is a liar for him, major sins, they become easy because the person knows that the back door of telling lies is open and the person will be able to tell a lie and get away with the biggest of the major sins. Verse 26, Yusuf salam said, it was she who sought to seduce me and a witness from her family testified if his shirt is torn from the front, then she has told the truth and he is of the liars. But if his shirt is torn from the back, then she has lied and he is of the truthful. So when her husband saw his shirt, torn from the back he said indeed it is of the woman's plan indeed your plan is great yusuf ignore this and my wife ask forgiveness for your sin indeed you were of the sinful so now what happened is that hazrat yusuf salam despite the fact that he was innocent and he was trapped into all this all who managed to say was, he aravadatni and napsi, that she was the one who was trying to seduce me. But he could not say anything more than that. He could just say that. So there are situations in life where we cannot defend or protect ourselves and we just, just keep quiet and silent. But when he was quiet, then Allah, and he was patient, what happened then? This was another trial. This was another trial. Blame of immorality, intention and attempt of adultery, especially for a pious and a modern, modest person like Yusuf salam, such a black mark on his righteous character. This was an immense trial. Remember, life is a continuous trial. One passes off, the next will start. But in all, Allah will be with with us if we stay patient. Now, how did the help of Allah come? Shahida shahidum min ahliha. There was a witness from the family members or the relatives of the woman herself. Immediately at the time where the episode and the dialogue was happening between the husband, the wife, and Hazrat Yusuf a relative came over as a witness to testify. And he also advised and he gave a very logical, circumstantial evidence to be seen. And he said, he told about the shirt where it was torn from behind or was torn from the front. <clears throat> so, the, so the relative suggested a circumstantial evidence and it was sought. And then when the evidence was sought, the husband saw and there was the proof that who was wrong and who was right. So this turned out as a clear proof against the mistress. But... What did the husband do? What did the husband do? And what did he say to the wife? And what did he say? What did he have to say to Hazrat Yusuf salam? He said to the wife, Inna qayda hunna azim, that evil and wicked are the plans of the women and the plans of the women are great. From this part of the verse, Inna qayda hunna azim, there are some people who quote, who quote this to comment, about women that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Quran that women are very crafty and women are very wicked and they are experts in making wicked plans. Remember, there is nothing of the sort. There is absolutely nothing of the sort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no comment of Quran like that. This verse is in fact not a comment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the women. This is a sentence from the dialogue of Aziz. What has been? It is what? It is a sentence or it is a part from the dialogue of Aziz, which has been quote on quote mentioned by Allah during the narration. So it is not a comment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, despite recognizing whose fault it was, what did the husband do? What did he have to say? He said, Yusuf salam, ignore this. And he asked his wife to seek forgiveness for her sins. Indeed, you were of the sinful. How callous, how careless, least bothered 
about the modesty of his wife? How indifferent about such a plan of immorality in his own house? Or otherwise, I might say, how helpless, how very helpless regarding his wife. So either simply did not or could not scold or punish his wife, or on the contrary, just asked her to see forgiveness and told Yusuf Salam to just ignore and to overlook. Overlook and ignore? Really? Such a gross act? How, how careless and how, or how careless or how helpless. So in the next few verses, we will realize the result. We will, we will realize the result that when in a society, the women folk get so liberated and the men who supposedly have to act as, as al-nisa, they have become overpowered. They lose control. What such a liberated society ends up in, corruption, and immorality prevails. This is what we will be learning in the next few verses. Verse number 30. And the women in the society, in the city said, the wife of Aziz is seeking to seduce her slave boy. He has impassioned her with love. Indeed, we see her to be in clear error. So this was what is happening that uh, in the society and they were uh, talking about and they were commenting about the whole uh, event which was going out in the house of Aziz. So when she heard of their scheming, she went for them. She sent for them and prepared for them a banquet and gave each of them a knife and said to Yusuf alayhi salam, come out before them. And when they saw him, they greatly admired him. They said, Hasha lillah. And they cut their hands and said, perfect is Allah. This is not a man. This is none but a noble angel. So Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam's mistress to prove that she was right. And uh, she arranged a get together of all the ladies of the society. And it was what? It was just a luxurious gathering. When all the la ladies, they gathered up, she asked her, the youth of Palai Salaam, to enter. And uh, all the ladies, they were all struck by his beauty. And in a shocked state of mind, looking at him, they cut their fingers. And uh, instead, of their, uh, instead of their fruit, they were cutting. And so in this shock state, this is the only, this is the only part of Surah Yusuf salam, which indirectly highlights the beauty of Hazrat Yusuf salam. Otherwise, throughout Surah Yusuf, we are learning of uh, the goodness and of the kindness by Hazrat Yusuf salam. She said, that is the one about whom you blamed me, and I certainly sought to seduce him, but he firmly refused. And if he will not do what I order him, he will surely be imprisoned and will be of those debased. Verse number 33, he said, my Lord, prison is more to my liking that, uh, than that to which they invite me. And if you do not avert from me their plans, I might incline towards them and thus be of the ignorant. So what we learn from here is that all those who incline towards immorality, towards uh, adultery, towards illegal relationships are whom are ignorant in the sights of Allah. And uh, the verse also shows the preferences and the priorities of Hazrat Yusuf salam, who was the righteous and who was the pious. So his Lord responded to him and averted from him their plan. Indeed, he is the hearing and knowing. <coughs> Verse 35, then it appeared to them that after they had seen the signs that Aziz should surely imprison him for a time. So now this highlights the state of affairs which was prevalent in the society. The state of affairs was that the pious and the modest, they were in prison. 
and the immoral indulging in adultery, they were set free, liberated women, liberated women with no one to check, to control or supervise the women folk. The men of the society, they are being suppressed. Ladies are out of control, roaming about purposely vulgar gatherings, indulging in immoral conversation. This was what? This was as a result of the society was drowned because of all this, the society was drowned in immorality and all forms of modesty and piety had disappeared when the women had, had gone out of control. And when the men folk of the society had lost the control and they were being suppressed. Verse number 36, and they, and there entered the prison with him two men. One of them said, Indeed, I have seen myself in a dream pressing wine. The other said, Indeed, I have seen myself carrying upon my head some bread from which the birds were eating. Inform us of its interpretation. Indeed, we see you, we see you to be one of those who do good. So the next few verses will narrate the part of the life of Hazrat Yusuf salam in the prison. Now in the prison, this is a conversation of Hazrat Yusuf salam with the two inmates of prison. They wanted to find out the interpretation of their dreams and they came over to Hazrat Yusuf salam. And what did they say? What they said was the reason why they had come to Yusuf salam. They said, Inna lanaraka minal muhsinin. Indeed, we see you to be of those who do good. We see here, we learn from here the good manners of Hazrat Yusuf salam. Even in the prison, even in the prison with the inmates of the prison being criminals of all sorts, all of them being non-believers, they being sinners, but dealing with them, dealing with them also, Hazrat Yusuf salam, is exhibiting his good manners. This is what Allah says in Quran, Kulu husana. And Prophet وسلم, used to supplicate, Allahumayni a'uzu bika mimmu kirat al-akhlaq wal-a'mal wal-akhwa'i wal-adwa. And for Prophet وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, inna qala ala khuluqin azim. And he himself, Prophet وسلم, himself said, I was sent for the completion of good manners. And not only good manners, Hazrat Yusuf salam, even answers the questions such criminals are coming up with. This is why, because Prophet salam, has said that those who have knowledge about something, but despite the knowledge, they do not answer when they are asked about that thing, will be given two tongues of fire in their mouth on the day of resurrection. So Hazrat Yusuf salam, was kind to them, was doing good to them, was polite to them, was answering their questions. Words number 37, he said, you will not receive food that is provided to you except that I will inform you of its interpretation before it comes to you. That is from what my Lord has taught me. Indeed, I have left the religion of a people who do not believe in Allah and they in the hereafter are disbelievers. So Hazrat Yusuf salam, is now talking to the two inmates of uh, the prison who have come to ask the interpretation of their dream. And he, he said, that he promised that he will answer their queries before the meal was served. This he did purposely. He promised them that he will answer their queries before the meal was served. And he did this purposely because now he was going to give them a small message and he was going to give them a brief invitation towards Islam. And he thought that when he would start talking of something other than he was asked, 
then they will lose interest and they might leave. So tactfully, to keep them hooked on, he promised them that he will answer their interpretation. So also, before telling them the interpretation, he started introducing them to the attributes of Allah. He said what? That uh, this, that is from what my Lord has taught me. That Yusuf salam told them that this knowledge, this knowledge of the interpretation of the dreams, which had impressed the, in, uh, the inmates of the prison, was not out of his own account. He said, Mimma alimni is what my Lord has taught me. This shows what? This shows that Hazrat Yusuf Islam, because of his knowledge, had not turned arrogant. He had stayed humble and he was grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledging the blessing he had blessed him too. And remember, humbleness and gratitude, they go side by side, one potentiating the other. All those who are grateful, they are humbled to Allah. And all those who are humbled to Allah, they develop the feeling of gratitude also. So Yusuf alayhi salam very humbly introduced his Lord. Rather than trying to uh, boost about himself, he was humbly introducing his Lord and also told him. And he also, he, he left them that, he told them that this was a blessing of Allah. So this tells us all that all those who have been blessed by the blessings of Allah need to do what? Need to introduce to the people humbly the Rabb, the sustainer who had blessed all the blessings with. And how precise and how wise he is, how wisely did he handle all of them? He was going to introduce his Lord and also told him that he had left the religion of all those who believed other than Allah. But he was so wise and he was so precise that he directly did not criticize their religion. He directly did not criticize their belief, but very wisely introduced what the truth was. Verse 38, he said, that I have followed the religion of my fathers, Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub. So there, after introducing Allah, and after indirectly introducing his religion, he is introducing all the prophets also, and his ancestors also. And it was not for us to associate anything with Allah, that is, from the favor of Allah upon us and upon the people, but most of the people are not grateful. Then Hazrat Yusuf Islam is continuing, that is, that this is what, this is a blessing of Allah, and he's introducing his uh, ancestors and the prophets of Allah. Oh, my two companions of prison are separate lords better, or Allah, the one, the prevailing. Now, after a very wise introdu introduction to Allah, to the prophets, and to his religion, indirectly, passively, he directly led them uh, a leading question. He asked them a leading question. Rather than directly, directly criticizing, rather than directly criticizing them or trying to corner them, he did not try to directly corner them or he did not directly criticize them because this would lead to what? This would lead to them being offended. He did ask who do you worship and moreover he wasn't even judgmental to comment that oh you you are the non-believers you are you are committing major sins you are indulging in polytheism or you are the people of hellfire no just an in indirect questions what do you think so this question will force them to put their minds to it and will also prevent them being, being irritated or being hostile to all what he was saying. Verse number 40, 
you worship not besides him except mere names you have named them you and your fathers for which allah has sent down no authority legislation is not but for allah he has commanded that you worship not except him this is the correct religion but most of the people do not know so now generally what happens is how is Hazrat Yusuf? Why is Hazrat Yusuf salam, talking to them like this indirectly and passively? Because you know, generally, when non-believers, all of the people who are involved in polytheism, when they are invited towards faith and believe in oneness of Allah, then generally the first argument what they come up with is that our ancestors. Our ancestors had the same fate. And they generally say that it is our ancestral religion. So in other words, all those who believe in partners other than Allah, when they are invited towards the belief of oneness of Allah, in other words, they try to tell the person who is inviting towards Islam that are you trying to tell us? that our ancestors, they had wronged and they had sinned. So indirectly, they try to tell the person who's inviting that, look, by all this invitation, you are labeling that our ancestors were sinners or they were the wrongdoers. But relating to this psyche, before they could answer back very, very wisely, Yusuf salam told him, told them to satisfy the debate in their minds about their ancestral religions. And Yusuf salam, also with wisdom told them that their ancestors were, were, were doing what? They did not have a solid proof of their concepts and beliefs in being right. And then another thing which usually comes up in the mind of the invited people is that have I been ignorant very sensibly and tactfully rather than telling them that you are ignorant and you are illiterate and you are behaving silly. He said what? Majority does not know. So this is being tactful, not offending them, no personal comments, no personal judgmental uh, criticism, which might raise hostility. So that we need to what? Closing the doors of their minds and sealing the hearts with obstinacy. So remember, unplanned, improper, unwise, untactful invitation towards Islam sometimes is very, very harmful and acts as a deterrent to offend the non-believers against Islam also. So the points to be noted are that we can see invitation towards Islam seems as an integral and an essential and persistent part of the life of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam till now in a state of, in a continuously miserable state, one trial after the other, hardships, crises, consecutively non-ending situations cropping up one after the another. Despite being in the prison, such a man, pious man, being surrounded by all forms of criminals. How difficult. But even in all these situations and scenarios, he still continues inviting towards Allah, connecting the people with their Lord. Remember, remember, Dawa invitation towards Allah, as Allah orders in Quran, so always, always has to be the first priority. Inviting towards Allah, connecting the people of Allah with Allah, with their Lord, as always has to be the first priority everywhere. May it be homeland, may it be a foreign land. It, may, it has to be the primary priority for everywhere, for everyone. 
everyone, known, unknown, relatives, strangers, friends, enemies, rich, poor, master, servant, old, young, women, men, blacks, whites, literate, illiterate, pious, disobedient, Muslims, non-Muslims, inviting everyone under all conditions, under all conditions, all situations, we may be rich, we may be poor, healthy, sick, we may be strong, we may be weak, we may be happy or sad, blessed or deprived, we may be old or young, all times, all seasons, day, night, summer, winter, monsoon. This is what Yusuf salam did. This is what Nuh salam and all prophets did. And this is the manner we need to adopt. And moreover, inviting towards Allah, Dawa, wisely, with planning, carefully and tactfully, sensibly, not offending, not abusing, being polite, gentle, and staying sincere and non critical and non judgmental. This is how we need to do our Dawa and staying humble and polite. If you see the talk, the talk for the day by Hazrat Yusuf was like what? It was very brief. It was brief, it was simple and legible to the point and yet very effective and very comprehensive. So I would suggest that for all of us, we need to stay prepared in our minds with like two to five of such short comprehensive talks relating to Dawa, relating to inviting people towards Allah. So that whenever and wherever we get an opportunity, we can, we can immediately drop a few words. Because, you know, I feel that usually when we get a chance to say something, we are short of words. And we feel then that we won't be able to say much. So we just choose to stay quiet and we lose our chance. So you keep your homework done and you stay prepared guiding someone might be an atonement for our hereafter also. Verse 41, oh, two companions of prison, as for one of you, he will give drink to his master of wine, but as for the other, he will be crucified and the words will eat from his head. The matter has been decreed about which you both inquire. So in this verse 41, finally, after his brief inviting note, he told them the interpretation of their dreams as he had promised. Because keeping promises is what? It is a manner of the pious and it is also the order of Allah. And uh, avoiding from concealing one's knowledge and not sharing it with others, it is a worst form of stinginess and laziness or it is the dishonesty also. And uh, what did he have to tell them? Fasaka Rabbahu means what? That this person was to be a waiter for the king who would serve wine to the king. And the second, uh, second person was a um, convicted criminal and he <clears throat> was to be crucified. And he said, whom? Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. He said to the one whom he knew would go free, mention me before your master. But shaitan made him forget the mention to his master. And Yusuf alayhi salam remained in the prison for several years. Here um, he asked the one who would be free to mention so that he could be set free also. And in the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the word bizarasinin. In Arabic, the bizarasinin means a period of about like five to eight years. Just like we, uh, we say decade for 10 years and we say century for 100 years. So similarly, bizarasinin, how many years? Like about five to eight years. And this was his stay in the prison.